how do you do it? Okay, so where everyone starts taking notes, the dietitians in the room. So it's pretty simple and I think that's the point, okay? The first month I put here sort of a military figure here, it's kind of a tough love month. The first month is very strict and that's, I think, and we're going to get back to this as well in the recent study, seems to be important for efficacy, that having a very strict first month seems to be critical. Um, so what I tell these families is this is the protocol and really for the first month do not deviate from it if possible. And I think we do the same thing with the ketogenic diet as well of having a pretty strict firm first month before we start loosening up. So I get baseline electrolytes, liver function tests, cholesterol as we do on the ketogenic diet. Um, I tell them to take a daily multivitamin and calcium. Again, just like the ketogenic diet. And then for young children, I say to cut carbs to 10 grams a day. And it doesn't matter which carbs they want. The low glycemic index treatment, sort of pioneered out of the group in Boston, allows more carbs, but is real more specific about which carbs the child can eat. On the modified Atkins diet, I don't care. Okay, whatever those 10 grams of carbs are, they can take what they want. If they want a candy bar, they're not going to get much, okay? But if they want that, they can have that. There's a little differences between our diets, but not much. 10 grams of carbs per day, 15 for the teenagers and adolescents. Lots of high fat foods, all the fluids they want, all the calories they want, okay? Just not the carbs. I give them a lot of recipes and websites. I'm going to show you some examples of that. Uh, a lot of what I do in the one hour is tell them and give them materials telling them they've got homework to do. And I usually see these kids on a Friday tell the families to go shopping and read over the weekend and then start on Monday because there is a fair amount that they do on their own in terms of research. I check their urine ketones twice a week, their weight once a week. I leave their medicines alone for the first month just so I really know what the diet is going to do. And then I tell them in about a month to get back to me, let me know how they're doing. That's it, okay? That was about 40 seconds, okay? The idea is to be simple, simple, simple. If they're asking too many questions, it's becoming too complicated. That's sort of not the point. Again, I give them a lot of information to read. I give them a seizure calendar so I can look and try to correlate ketones with seizure control. Um, I tell them what high fat foods are. It's amazing how often they don't understand or realize what they are. So I tell them, again, this should be a high fat food, butter, mayonnaise, uh, olive oil, heavy whipping cream should be incorporated in almost all of the meals. It really should be a high fat food. Do you guys have fruit 2 here in Canada? Flavored waters? Flavored waters. Yeah, there's different varieties. Fruit 2 is the one they have in America that's pretty popular. And these are zero calorie, zero carb water, basically, that has sort of a flavoring to it and a little bit of Splenda. Uh, it can be very, very helpful for these children. You can actually mix that into different things and make it taste a little bit better. Um, so I tell them about all these different products out there. I give them a lot of reading materials. Probably the most important, uh, other than our book, um, is actually a carb counting guide. This really becomes their Bible to some degree. They read, they can look of all kinds of foods out there. Uh, this is one by the Calorie King, it's called. You can buy this on Amazon, very helpful. It's about $9. I give them recipes. My dietitian will give them examples of what they can eat. It's very easy for me to say what you can't eat but it's sometimes trickier to say what you can. So she'll give ideas of meal plans, uh, as Elizabeth showed as well, to kind of give them a sense of what kind of foods. And I tell them, you don't have to stick to it. This is just an idea, just an example. I tell them to go on the internet. This is from atkins.com, lots of beautiful recipes. Uh, this is from epilepsy.com, where I have a page and have lots of information as well as some other recipes. That's a good one. Uh, there are some internet uh, support groups out there. Yahoo has one. Uh, there are several out there. I tell families these are fine as long as you check with me first if you find out or hear some information that maybe doesn't sound familiar or doesn't make sense from what I've said. Uh, sometimes families mean well and will share some ideas that may not be appropriate for that child. But there are a lot of parent support groups out there uh, with information on the internet. Uh, the Charlie Foundation is quite good. Uh, Matthew's Friends out of England also has recipes and ideas. I'll probably very soon put ECI on here too, put some recipes too. Lots of good support groups out there. The internet can be your friend. After month two, things get much easier. And this again gets back to some of the mechanistic findings that we're seeing that the first month really matters. After that, you can get a lot more uh, easy, a lot less restrictive on the diet. So at month two to three, I'll say go up to 20 grams of carbs per day, almost automatically. And they generally do very well. We've seen that in some studies. Um, I tell them you probably don't need to check your ketones regularly. Uh, good evidence that ketones matter in that first month. Beyond that, no evidence they matter ketogenic or modified Atkins diet. And a lot of families check ketones every day. I tell them to stop. Probably doesn't seem to matter. 
check their weight weekly because weight loss can occur. At this point, I'll start lowering medicines if they want, similar to what Elizabeth mentioned. On the ketogenic diet, we kind of do the same thing. After a month or two, we'll start reducing medicines if the family wants. Sometimes they don't. Um, we'll start allowing some of the low-carb products. The first month, I tell them to steer away from them a little bit. Then you can start doing that after a month or two. And then we get blood work and a visit at three months. Uh, this was at the height of the Atkins craze. This was a supermarket in Baltimore. All of the low-carb products out there, you can still find a lot of these on the shelves nowadays, uh, can be very helpful for some children who want different foods. Uh, I teach them how to read a food label. Uh, it's not always intuitive, so I have to spend a little time explaining how to look for carbs on the food label. We do allow them to subtract fiber, which can be very helpful. So we'll say total carbs minus fiber is the carbs you should be counting, um, and that can be very uh, useful for the families. Okay, are there side effects? We're starting to learn a little more as we've been using it in the last seven years. And as Elizabeth mentioned, the ketogenic diet is a therapy. It is a medical therapy. These were two editorials uh, written by uh, Michael Deshoney um, and Jim Wheelis about the ketogenic diet, basically saying this is a medical therapy and like any medical therapy, there are risks and side effects. Elizabeth showed them very nicely. I won't go through this again. We talked about these constipation, slowing of the weight gain, acidosis, kidney stones, slowing of growth, uh, and as well, uh, hyperlipidemia, and again, I probably should have included bone fractures with long-term use. What about with the modified Atkins diet? Sort of unpublished, but probably these are the three main ones that we still see. A lot of the side effects go away. Constipation, uh, impacting on growth, um, kidney stones, really not a big issue, interestingly, uh, with the Atkins diet and what we've seen. Um, but slowed weight gain certainly can occur, and again, sometimes that's on purpose, that they don't want to gain a lot of weight. Overketosis absolutely still can occur. We've had some families start the modified Atkins diet, call me the next day, clearly in very high ketosis, not feeling so well, so you have to be prepared for that to happen. Uh, and then lastly, hyperlipidemia. In almost every study, not just mine, they still see that the cholesterol does go up. Not a big surprise on the modified Atkins diet. Excuse me. Uh, this was actually from one of our studies where we looked at labs before and then after the modified Atkins diet. And you can see here in yellow the blood urea nitrogen, sort of a measure of how much protein uh, the child is taking does go up, but the creatinine, the measure of kidney function, does not. So more protein, but the kidney usually can handle that. And then as well, cholesterol does go up probably about 20%. All right, and sort of the time I have remaining, I'm going to mention a study that is as yet unpublished, but uh, potentially very exciting and useful, uh, sort of an, a different approach to the modified Atkins diet that we just recently finished the study uh, in a way to perhaps improve the efficacy of the modified Atkins diet. And sort of one of the questions and families who came to me to start the study asked was, why? Well, there are some reasons. So the modified Atkins diet still has some issues. It's still a restrictive diet, so if we could maybe come up with a way to modify the modified Atkins diet to make it a little less restrictive even than it was now, that might be nice for families. But as well, again, most of us who use it say, if you look at the data, it's probably not as effective as the ketogenic diet. If you combine all of the children that have been in studies at three months, about a 48% response rate compared to about a 55 to 60% response rate on the ketogenic diet. So just like Elizabeth, myself, we're always trying to do better and say, maybe is there a way to tweak the modified Atkins diet and make it closer to what the ketogenic diet is, but still keep some of the advantages that it has in terms of restrictiveness and an outpatient approach. So what we did is we went back to the drawing board a little bit and looked at some of the old data and said, are there clues in our old research that can tell us how maybe better to do the modified Atkins diet? And sort of the two big clues we had were really that that first month seems to be the most important. Number one, there was some data that large ketosis matters at the first month, but then never again. So maybe if we can get these children in a large ketosis or higher ketosis in that first month, they might do better. The other finding though is that when we actually randomized children to 10 grams or 20 grams a day, we found that 10 grams a day initially was better, but then it didn't matter after that. Again, hinting that higher ketosis, a stricter onset might be more important. So our first, hy first hypothesis, excuse me, was that a stricter, tougher, okay, even tougher than what we've done before, first month of that modified Atkins diet might be better than the outcomes we see with the modified Atkins diet by itself. So one of our ideas was, can we do the modified Atkins diet plus? Okay, do a modified Atkins diet with some sort of an intervention that might boost its efficacy above what we see with the modified Atkins diet alone. And then the second theory was that it wouldn't matter after that first month, okay, that you could stop whatever this intervention was, go back to the modified Atkins diet, 
less restrictive, and you know what? It wouldn't matter. Their seizure control would stay as good as it was in that first month. And you can tell these families, look, this first month's going to be rough, but stick with it, and then we can lighten up later. So that was my hypothesis. So the intervention that we came up with, and actually the nutrition people helped me with this, was to see if maybe a little boost of KetoCal, sort of as a substitute, our initial idea was a substitute for lunch, many of these children ended up doing it as sort of an after school snack, would be beneficial above and beyond the outcomes we've seen on the modified Atkins diet. Uh, so KetoCal, as many of you know, is a four to one powdered product with a slight vanilla-ish taste. Uh, it comes in a four to one ratio, and if you mix it up 60 grams with 240 milliliters of water, it makes about a 10 shake, tastes a little bit better cold, as many of the families told me. Uh, it can be flavored, you can mix it instead of with water, with flavored water like fruit 2 and give it a little bit of a different flavor to it. And then as you'll hear about later this afternoon, you can take those 60 grams of powder, and mix it into foods and make different foods out of it. I told these families, I don't care which, okay, just get those 60 grams in, powdered as a food or liquid as a shake, although I told them the shake is probably a little bit easier. So what we did is we said, let's try to keep everything identical in the modified Atkins diet as we've done in other studies, with the only change being this addition of the 60 grams of the uh, keto cal, but only for that first month. After the first month, it runs out. They got a box, and after that box was done, that was it. Uh, some families said they loved it. I said, too bad. Okay, it stops per the study protocol. Okay, there's some families, Susie's in the firm, who said, I hate it. We said, good, it's over after the first month, okay? But that was sort of how it worked, again, to kind of test both parts of the theory that it really only mattered that first month. So this was a study that was very nicely funded by Nutricia, who had really no say in sort of the study protocol, which was nice of them. They had some ideas, but it was my study. Uh, but they funded it, which was really nice to get a lot of families here. Uh, they didn't pay for travel expenses, but all of the clinic costs were covered, which was very nice for very needy families. And we just finished it this September. And we tried to mimic again by making it for intractable kids. So the mean age was about seven years. They needed to have at least uh, two drugs. The mean was five that they had tried. Uh, they needed to have at least seven seizures per week. The average was 7D. So these were, again, very intractable kids, which was the intention. And we wanted to make it as similar as possible to historical controlled prospective studies of the modified Atkins diet. And when we compared our demographics to the historical studies, there was no difference. So seems like apples and apples, not apples and oranges. Did it work? Well, the answer was it did. Okay, so when we actually looked at the outcomes at the one month point, uh, we had 24 out of 30 have a 50% response or better, which is 80%, which was statistically higher than about the 48% that we saw at one month. Uh, sorry, 58% at one month. We'll talk about three months in a minute. 37% uh, had a greater than 90%, which was not quite significant, uh, but close in terms of benefits above the modified Atkins diet by itself. Didn't seem to matter their age, their gender, their seizure frequency or type, as similar has been found in other studies. All children seem likely to respond to this modified Atkins diet keto cal approach. A little bit of a gender difference. The boys did a little better than the girls, but not statistically significant. At two months, the second part of the theory was that they wouldn't get any worse once the keto cal went away, and that's also what we found, that at two months without the keto cal, 70% response rate, uh, if anything a little higher, a 43% having a greater than 90% response rate, and actually both of these were statistically significant. Uh, we looked to see how many children got worse between month one and month two, and uh, being worse meaning a greater than 25% increase in their seizures between those time periods, which could be coincidence, but we wanted to look at that. About 27% got worse. Historically, that happens in about 20% of kids. They'll get worse between month one, month one and month two. Also, no difference. How well was it tolerated? This is an unsolicited photo of one of my patients. She's kind of the, the milk smile with her keto cow. Uh, she's probably going to be on your, your uh, packaging soon. Um, we asked them to rate the diet. They said the average, they thought out of 10 was a 7.2 out of 10. We asked them to rate the keto cal, it was about a 5.3 out of 10. There were some kids who loved it and some kids who did not like it. Uh, but they all were able to do it. They kind of soldiered through that first month, even if they didn't like it. And what we found was that most of them still liked it as the shakes, 87% drank it as the shakes. At two months when the study ended, if they wanted to go back on the keto cal, even though I told them it probably wouldn't do much for their efficacy, but if they just liked it, they could go back on it. And a little less than half uh, decided they wanted to go back on it uh, by prescription. Uh, the average weight change was about a kilogram average loss in weight over the two month period. Uh, the cholesterol and triglycerides did go up as we've seen in almost every other modified Atkins diet study.